Okay, we're back. We're live to give it Monday afternoon. It's the 15th. It's President's Day. Um, that's a very special day now. It wasn't so special before it, but it's very special now uh, after all that has happened in the United States. And we are joined by two guests who are both in Phnom Penh. And we're going to talk today about lessons from the Khmer Rouge Tribunal. Very important. And uh, Sam Owen, uh, SOK, Sok, is with us. And Monica Sok, his daughter, is with us. And Monica is a member of Project Expedite Justice, and Sam is, I guess, uh, of the generation that is extremely familiar with what happened in the killing fields in Cambodia uh, from 1970 to 1979. Very important discussion. So we want to catch up with what Project Expedite Justice has done and is doing, and what Sam can tell us about the tribunal there it took place for quite a while in, uh, in Phnom Penh in Cambodia. So, Monica, you first. Can you tell us what, what Project Expedite Justice is doing, has done, uh, with regard to Cambodia and the tribunals, and what you are doing for Project Expedite Justice? Okay, so uh, thank you for having me in the show. And uh, um, uh, I would like to greeting um, the audience as well. And uh, talking about the PJ, we are not um, working with um, are related to tribunal, but we um, um, personally, I uh, used to work in uh, at the Khmer Rouge court for almost six years. So um, I I learned from that, and I apply to the um, um, my I, I use my own experience and working for PEJ to make sure that. Um, the world can use uh, and bring the uh, important things on the documentation and ac accountability for the crime in trans transitional justice in process and how we find the truth, how uh, the doc uh, we do the documentation and how we help the, uh, the victim through my, uh, uh, my own experience working at the uh, Khmer Rouge court, yeah. Okay. So, what, what is so? What is your immediate interest um, in the uh, the tribunal? Because it, it's over, isn't it? Isn't the tribunal over, or is it still going on? For the tribunal, it's still going on. Uh, um, uh, briefly talking about the cases in the tribunal. Uh, uh, it's having four cases. Uh, it has case number zero zero one, case zero zero two, case zero three, and four. And now case zero zero one already finished it, but uh, for the case zero zero two slash two, it's still ongoing, and it will be um, um, at the Supreme Court maybe this year. And also the other two cases, case zero three, three and four, is still ongoing, and it's now um, at the pre-trial stage, yeah. Okay, well, my, my understanding is that Project Expedite Justice can go anywhere uh, with the idea of uh, investigating and prosecuting or assisting in the prosecution of war crimes and violations of human rights. Uh, yes. What is your role in that? Are you, are you a lawyer? Are you an investigator? How are you involved personally? Uh uh, for me, uh, in in a uh, work with PEJ, uh, Project Expedite Justice, I'm working as the country lead in Cambodia and also in South Sudan. Um, in Cambodia, uh, in South Sudan, I work uh, for uh, work with uh, the partner. I um, train and assist them, uh, helping them on how we document, we um, investigation and also how to uh, documentations on those evidence and also from those um, 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 uh, investigations uh, from the, our, our partner. And for in Cambodia, we are not really working based on the international crime, atrocity crime, no, but we work on the um, uh, promote on the, the, do, do, doing the same thing, like we train, we assist on investigation, but on exactly cases like, for example, child abuse, labor exploitation, human trafficking, yeah, something like that, that we work close with uh, our NGO partner. And also we are not only focused in 
uh, Cambodia, but also we would like to bring all those spaces uh, to um, um, other countries. Like for example, like uh, we are now not uh, we are now having cases that we work with uh, the lawyer in French and also UK, Australia, US, and Thailand. Uh, uh, work with uh, the lawyer that could um, claim for compensation to the victim who uh, have been abused from the actual or offender. Yeah. How do you how do you select the cases, Monica? I mean, what you know, what cases uh, do you want to handle, and what cases do you actually handle? Who 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 does the vetting, and uh, and what what are the uh, parameters of your cho of your choice? Um, we currently, we only work based on the child abuse and um, also money laundering, uh, if there is, and also um, human trafficking, labor exploitation. And how we choose the case, we work with our partner, uh, with NGOs, like we have about 12 partners in Cambodia that uh, mostly when they need our assistance, we always giving hand and we always give the idea we always give our uh strategy on uh, litigation cases both in Cambodia and also uh the cross-border cases so uh, do you uh, do you investigate and try or do you just investigate or do you just try I mean, are you a, are you a, a trial lawyer um i i also oh, oh, for pj we uh do uh, also, before the trial, pre-trial, we do like investigation and also do the legal research uh, if the case possible to go uh, to the court. And yeah, um, uh, this year, uh, I'm, I'm a new lawyer. I just uh, admit at the bar. So we plan to uh, handle the case and uh, we work with our partner, Amran uh, Law Firm, uh, which is... Uh, uh, with my dad, so we can work on the cases and have those vulnerable uh, victims on, um, yeah. So, you know, there's no reason why a new lawyer can't change the world, you know, I'd like to offer that thought. Um, <laughs> you don't have to be an old lawyer to change the world. New lawyers are actually more adept at changing the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you, why but, do, you but, do this, Monica? Why do you do this? Because I want to, I want to prove that young lawyer also can change the world. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's not for the money then. Huh? Mm, I I think it's it's about a passion because maybe I dad and he let's say he influenced me maybe, but uh, I really love to work uh, on this thing. I volunteer working on uh, human rights since 2009. So since how I much just effect uh, does your, your dad's experience have on you? I mean, uh, how much of this is um, be because you are Cambodian, because your dad was involved in the, in the uh, Khmer Rouge incident of the uh, 1970s? Um, for me, I think maybe I can say both uh, influence from my dad and also from my work experience because since I uh, start work uh, as an internship, before I, I really don't know, uh, I cannot imagine that I, 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 have, uh, I have this day uh, from my work experience, from my view, from what I see, from my own perspective, it brings me to um, um, become a human rights a lawyer and want to have those people. Yeah. Well, let me ask you to introduce your dad, okay? And I, I'm sure we will find the answer interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, here he is, uh, Sam Un Sok, um, Cambodian, uh, and he lived in Cambodia at a very difficult time. Uh, why don't you introduce him? To be honest, he's my hero and um, my role model as well. And he's a really great guy who, a great lawyer who passionate on human rights. And he always uh, gave all his 
hard to work for people and for justice. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. That's a good beginning. So Sam, <laughs> you're a lawyer. Uh, when yeah. did you get to be a lawyer? When, you know, and what have you done? What kind of practice have you had, especially uh, you know, from Cambodia? Yeah, in fact, I, I practiced as a defense lawyer since 1919. So uh, yeah, right now, what, I think more than 30 years. <laughs> uh, and the uh, defense of whom? Who have you defended? Uh, with, with yeah, mostly they are, they are poor people and vulnerable people. And uh, mostly our case is again the powerful, uh, powerful people. And I, I also handle many political cases, especially the, uh, the, weak, the weaker, I mean, the abused by the ruling. So um, your office is in Phnom Penh? Yes. So here, here your daughter is a, essentially a prosecutor, and you're essentially a defense person. Um, but you were also into political things, so you don't mind uh, you don't mind speaking up to power then. Uh, okay, okay. I mean, uh, yeah. In um, uh, many cases, especially po political case, you know, the ruling party. They have strong power. They uh, they dominate the uh, judiciary. They dominate the um, armed forces, etc. They they all have their power. But uh, and the, for the political case, very few lawyers there to handle that case. You know, so that's why I think. Uh, but anyway, the, in in our law, I mean, we respect the right to counsel, right? Uh, so that's why uh, we. Uh, she, my organization be for volunteer to help those poor people. Ah, well, okay. I think some of that rubbed off on your daughter, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, what about what about Khmer Rouge now? Khmer Rouge yeah, is, yeah, uh, we, we, yeah, yeah, with Khmer. Yeah. I, we, I and uh, other NGO, we are working, uh, we are lobbying to establish this tribunal since 1994. You know. Uh, at the time that in, uh, some of our people uh, were arrested, <laughs> arrested because we, we, we tried to get something from the pe people to support the establishment of this tribunal, okay? And until 1990, uh, and at the time, Khmer Rouge not yet dropped the weapons. Uh, they are still fighting with the uh, government, you know. Uh, so that's why we urge the, at the time we think that it is better for the UN to reinforce in this issue. That's why we try to, to lobby, get the thumbprint from the people and send to the United Nations to establish an international court for, for, for them. Uh, at the time, we not yet to think about how to establish the tribunal in Cambodia. At the time, we only think, uh, only we urge the UN to establish a special tribunal to, to try those uh, top leader of Khmer Rouge. And in 1997, the, the boss prime minister, uh, Randrat and Hun Sen, they also sent a letter to the UN to help to establish uh, the tribunal to, to, to block those top leader to, for justice. And uh, after that, the Khmer Rouge also talk with the government and they drop the weapons, you know. So that's why the political little bit change. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, at the time, the government is run by only Hun Sen. Uh, they they change their strategy. Uh, so they, they don't want to uh, try all the top leader on this, on this small top leader. Yeah, that, was, that was interesting. I, I have a recollection that uh, as you said, <clears throat> there was difficulty in getting the, what do you call it, the ECCC, the Extraordinary Chambers in the Courts of Cambodia together. Um, it, people didn't, didn't get together on it, and it required or it resulted in um, organizations like the United Nations outside of Cambodia to actually put this together. And, and they were, I guess the United Nations was involved and made it happen. Am I right? 
Uh, yes, at the time the UN respond, and but uh, and then after the Khmer Rouge dropped the weapon and joined the government, so the uh, the situation is a little bit changed, you know. So uh, UN urge us uh, only to try only a very small top leader, and uh, UN would want to establish the international court at abroad. So, so, so they, they think that if we be organized in, um, uh, in Cambodia, maybe the expense is very less. So, yeah, so, uh, and then we think that, okay, establishment in, in Cambodia is uh, maybe also useful, you know, because the, maybe uh, if, we, if, if, if it took abroad, maybe only few people, only, only educated people, who interested know about that. But if we happen in Cambodia, maybe more people uh, to know about that. Uh, and, yeah, isn't that uh, true? Sure. Yeah, and uh, and the very important uh, one important is the, uh, because most, uh, not most, maybe all Khmer people living in purple time, we have, uh, we call Khmer Rouge trauma. Uh, because at the time when we talking about Khmer Rouge, about uh, living in uh, in Khmer Rouge time, uh, we at the time maybe we have nightmare. Uh, we scare something like that, you know. Uh, so, but after we know that okay, this, those top the are tried and we have they make no more Khmer Rouge, no more power. Maybe it can heal the trauma. I I myself I also experience in healing this trauma too. But you were involved. Uh, yes, uh, yeah, like this, you know, uh, in, uh, when we, uh, we, we, we start, uh, we start talking about the distribution in 1998, 1999, uh, and, uh, and then 2000, many people know that, that the tribunal will be established. Okay, in, two, in 2000, uh, Kilsen Pond, you know Kilsen Pond? He's uh, ex uh, prime minister of the uh, Khmer Rouge, Khmer Rouge uh, regime. He came to my house and asked me to defend him. And uh, and I uh, and after that, uh, but, but at the time I denied because uh, we do not know what happened because the, the the tribunal is not yet established. And at the time I'm very busy in lobby uh, with the. Uh, uh, ECC or uh, to uh, uh, to recommend the internal rule, internal rule regulation. Uh, so that's why I think that if I uh, didn't announce that oh I defend him something like that maybe I lose my neutrality. Uh, so my recommendation may be not so strong. Okay, so that's why I I said no. Uh, at the time I cannot say anything. Uh, we will see if you if there is no any other lawyer to be, uh, to defend you. I I will I will uh, consider your request. I, I said like that. Uh, and did after you, that, did you later did you later represent him? No, 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 uh, no. So he what, you, what do you think about the uh, E Triple C? I mean, has it been successful? Has it done what it was intended to do? Has it found the facts? Has it um, found the, the reason some, why this whole phenomenon yeah. is it yeah, some, place? some success, some some I think some success, some some small fail. <laughs> because because after that we have uh, some objective for this uh, for the establishment of this tribunal. Uh, one, we want uh, access to justice. Uh, two, we want to know the truth. Uh, three, we want uh, you this establish, uh, the establishment of, uh, establishment of this tribunal to be deter the future leader not to do such a thing. And uh, for uh, maybe it is good for education, maybe young generation can know, can understand. And five is to release, really, uh, releasing the Khmer Rouge. Uh, trauma. So that's why uh, after this, uh, uh, after the 
ECC start their operation. Uh, we urge the UN has the outreach program, so the, so that they can they they invite many people, many poor people or, or not poor people, many people around the country, especially from the countryside, to visit the trip, the trial, uh, so that they can know oh Khmer Rouge no more Khmer Rouge Khmer. Uh, Khmer my Rouge time is, is ended, something like that, so that they can heal their trauma. Yeah. Uh, well, and, 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 and the last point we want this tribunal to be a model for the judicial reform in Cambodia. Well, it was it was an extraordinary time. This was madness. I mean, countrymen killing countrymen for no reason, really, no obvious reason yeah. anyway. So do people do people understand yet exactly what kind of social phenomenon this was, uh, that Cambodia would suffer like that? Did they understand why this could happen? Uh, did they understand what it, what it did to the country? I, uh, right now, I think uh, not, still not yet clear. We, uh, we need uh, some analysis, uh, analyze clearly especially the clear report from the, because the 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 trial uh, the trial do not show any because only like argument from both sides something like that you know so that's why we make uh, if, if the people follow the trial maybe they still confused you know so i think that we maybe we need uh, uh, some analyst uh, take all fact from the trial and then analyze and tell the people what happened, why the Khmer Rouge uh, killed uh, a lot of people like that. Yeah. So um, I asked you before the show, and I was surprised to find that the tribunal is still going on. It's not quite done yet. But what is it doing now? Yeah, like, like Monica said, uh, that mean the, because uh, we have the uh, appeal process. So they mean, and the defense lawyer, <laughs> they are very clever. They are all are very uh, clever, as, as, uh, very good, the best lawyer in Cambodia and probably like, uh, from the other country, you know. So they know how to prolong, you know, because one strategy of the uh, uh, defense uh, of uh, those crimes. Uh, the, those crimes, the abuse mostly are old people, right? And then they, they are best studied. They try to delay until all of them die. <laughs> Sometimes, some, uh, yeah, this is a joke for uh, for for lawyer. <laughs> uh, so, so where is it? Where is it going to go, Sam? I mean, how long do you think it'll take to wind this up? Because you know, 1970 or 79 was a long time ago. And mm -hmm. as you say, people are getting older and becomes less relevant to day-to-day -day life. Um, and, you know, people forget, they move on, they, they, they want to find reconciliation. Um, how long is this tribunal going to go and what has it got left to do before it ends? Like this, you know, the, for, the, for the people, the, we, uh, in fact, we do not uh, uh, focus on the conviction, punishment, you know. Only established of uh, only establishment of this tribunal, it is a success. That means the, the purpose is released, you know. That means they, they can heal, okay. Uh, we, we, uh, maybe very few people care about the result, about punishment, about conviction, we do care. But uh, I think that the only establishment is, is success for us. Oh, good. How do people feel now? You know, I mean, it, uh, as in other uh, outrageous, you know, historical events and periods that, that have taken place in the world, like, for example, in the 20th century. Um, well, this was also the 20th century, wasn't it? Um, you know, it, it's, um, it's worth studying to, to prevent it from happening again. And how, how do people feel? Mm. They, must, they must all know, even if they weren't there, they must know how traumatic it was. Um, is, is Cambodia healed? Uh, how, do, how does the average Cambodian person 
feel about what happened now? Are, are you beyond that? Are you are you past that? How do you feel about it? We, uh, yeah, like I said, I mean, the this, this trauma can be healed after we know that this regime is dead. Uh, so the outreach program to tell people uh, the, to make sure all people know about that, especially the people who live in Khmer Rouge time, can be in, they, are, they can be here, okay? And right now, I, I don't think that people st uh, uh, st uh, still continue to talk about Khmer Rouge. That means it's over, you know? That means all of us can be here. I, how, what kind of emotional reaction do you have? Are you angry? Um, yeah, uh, we, okay, uh, in, I mean, uh, after 1979, yeah, I feel angry, you know, so that's why uh, from 79, I, <laughs> I go to the border <laughs> and uh, join, uh, uh, join uh, res resistant force uh, to fight against Khmerus because I don't want the ages the uh, communists uh, exist in Cambodia anymore. Uh, but after that, and after the establishing the, this tribunal, and after I try to follow up the story in the trial, uh, that mean Khmeru is over. No more Khmeru is. Mm. So and what, what and the people of... hate communism. Yes, that's part of the whole discussion, isn't it? What, so, what kind of a country is Cambodia now? I know you have good broadband. I wouldn't be able to hear you and see you so well. So that's a good thing. You, know, you have a certain amount of technology in Phnom Penh. Um, but what kind of a country is it now? How would you describe it as against other countries in Southeast Asia? Yeah, we uh, at this we uh, we a little bit start the democracy. Yeah, but the, the, the democracy game is, uh, I mean, uh, the people can play, <laughs> can play uh, the democracy game, okay? Uh, so so uh, that's why democracy in Cambodia right now a little bit bad. Bad because I think that uh, the, the ruling parties uh, know, understand very well, you know, so what, uh, if we, if we compare with Bijanma and Cambodia, uh, our, our ruler, our prime minister is very clever than Bijanma, you know, because my, uh, my prime minister used judiciary, uh, the Bijanma used armed forces. It's different. Mm -hmm. But in any way, anyway, we need time to, uh, I mean, to build uh, the democratic uh, uh, institutions in future. Good to hear. Important. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I mean, everybody says that the, the power in the world is, is, is in Asia, and that includes Southeast Asia. So it's, it's a great future for Southeast Asia, I think. But the question, the, way, the last question I put to you is, could, could this happen again? Could what happened with the Khmer Rouge happen again? I don't, I don't think so. But uh, it is, it is very. Uh, if if you new strategy maybe, uh, but the, uh, I think that the people know that uh, because uh, during Khmer's time we they, we have no market. Do not use money. <laughs> And we we know that it is wrong. <laughs> it's not good. And they, the people know that the market is very important. Uh, they make us very happy. Okay, uh, so we we cannot go back uh, to the same Khmer Rouge regime anymore. But okay, uh, but we need to educate the young people to know constantly. You know, uh, we should not forget that. After that, uh, uh, because if we do not continue educating young people, maybe they forget <laughs> and they fall the same mistake. Well, you know what they say, he, he who uh, <clears throat> doesn't study history is doomed to repeat it. So we all need to know the history in 
however painful that may be. So Monica, I want to turn to you uh, at the last here. We're almost out of time. Oh. And ask you how you feel about this. You know, you, you were not around at the time this was happening, uh, and yet it, it, it pervades uh, Cambodian history. Uh, so how do you feel about it? Uh, is this well on your mind? You must have a sort of an impression of it as, as part of the, what do you call it, the, the history and culture of Cambodia. What do you think? For me personally, um, I think um, I learned a lot from it. And like my dad say, as a young people, I cannot forget the history. Even, yeah, the history or the, the past, but we learn from it and we take actions. We advocate to, or to prevent it won't be happen again. So uh, from those experience, from those um, um, during the transitional periods and also the tribunal, we have to bring those for our benefit uh, bring it and educate it, learn from it, and we can change for the better uh, even now or even in the future. So uh, like PJ doing, like we are not engaged only in Cambodia, but we engage in, uh, in other countries as well in the cases. So we believe that we are our one, so we can work on helping pe people and we can work for a better system yeah yeah well you know what i get out of this and i'm interested in your reaction is that the uh, e triple c was valuable it was necessary it was necessary for you know truth truth finding it was necessary for um you know responsibility as, as assigning responsibility and punishing some people yeah. um, but the important thing is that it was um it was um a commission that showed the world, not only Cambodia, but the world, what you do when you find this kind of travesty, this kind of madness has taken place. It's a sort of a global responsibility for what happens in every country. Yes. It's not limited to one country. So what the commission has done is a lesson, don't you think, for mm -hmm. everywhere, every country, don't you think? Um, I think, um everywhere we um like like i'm said like oh uh, the reason why tribunal using as the hybrid because we want to sh uh, show that international and national can work together and we 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 build for it for the better for uh, a good model for everyone to learn from it uh even sometimes a positive and negative outcome but at least we have positive to learn and um um trying to tell the world okay work on this is what uh this part is working so uh, we motivate to everyone to see it and learn from it yeah yeah that's, that's i think that's really important sam i want to give you the last the last words here uh what would you like to leave with our audience about you know your your life as a lawyer your experience in cambodia your experience with the uh, the Khmer Rouge and and with the development of the country thereafter, what would you like them to, to think about Cambodia and all these things? Yeah, one one mistake of of my regime is uh, they have no separation of power and they have no independent judiciary and they have no law. Okay, so I uh, the pillar of democracy, pillar of uh, uh, I mean, protection or ensure the uh, the freedom and right of the people. That means we need uh, an independent and strong judiciary. Very important. Very, yeah, very important. important. Lessons, yeah. Lessons we we can easily forget, but we should not forget them. You know, yeah. the, the 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 human species is so fragile. <laughs> Democracy is so fragile, as we have seen right here in the U.S. Uh, so it's very important that we learn from all of this. Thank you so much, Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you. Enjoy this discussion. Thank Have you. Have a nice day. The best to all of you and happy President's Day. <laughs>